guide how to gravity hop in the Jovian system. Well, we're going to do, cover the basics today, but uh, maybe we'll do the actual gravity hopping at some point as well. It's uh, inspired by the by the situation which Cosmonaut Crash is currently facing, where he has sent an orbiter destined for Ganymede here, which is uh, a large moon. So, the first issue that Cosmonaut Crash had, and uh, this is due to him playing almost exclusively RSS, uh, in stock you would see this more often, it's uh, when you are in the sphere of influence of a body, but you want to target it again. Well, that turn, it turns out that's not possible. Uh, so let's see here. We, we, we have set up an encounter here with Ganymede. So we're going to come in for that. Uh, it's going to be a couple of days more, but uh, let's not rush things as to miss this encounter. So here we are coming in here on the um, sunlit side of Ganymede, I believe. And once we pass into the sphere of influence of Ganymede, we will see that we lose our target. Now we can still click on Ganymede, I believe, like so, and try to set it as target. But as soon as we do that, we instantly lose our target again. Because, uh, well, the game is not really set up to um, account for our relative velocity to the target. That's, that's sort of a pointless stat statistic according to it because, well, we've got your orbital speed right here. Why, what, what else do you want to know? Um, which is then, again, in relation to that target. But um, sometimes we want to do a flyby uh, to set up for a future encounter and we can't do that. However, what we do know about this target, if we go ahead and target Ganymede here, well, we can, uh, well, it doesn't say here the orbital period of the target. We'll have to use the target orbit period stats down here to figure that out. But, uh, well, we can sort of cheat it this way in that its rotational period is going to be its orbital period because it's tidally locked to Jupiter. So, uh, we know that the orbital period is about seven days. So if we want to have an encounter on a future orbit, we need to set up our orbit so that it's a fractional multiple of seven days. And uh, uh, to begin with, we'll start with integer multiples. Like, uh, for instance, if we check this orbit, and before getting into the orbit, you don't have those stats either. But again, we can cheat that sort of by checking when is our apoapsis is going to be and when is our periapsis going to be because that's going to be half an orbit so if we can check the difference between these times i'm sorry about the beep if you heard that uh, we're going to see uh, the time it will take us to finish half an orbit uh, so we would uh, in this case well our periapsis we're going to encounter in 13 days and 19 hours and we would subtract from that uh, the time until our apoapsis, that is six days and 13 hours. So that's about seven days, give or take a couple of hours. So that's, we're, we're sort of set up in a, uh, well, if that's half an orbit, you, you times that by two, you'd multiply that by two, and uh, you'd uh, find that we're in, in a two to one resonance after this encounter. And that brings me to my second point about getting into these sort of close encounters. Um, if we were to go ahead and uh, get out into this uh, uh, Jovocentric orbit, uh, that is uh, orbiting around Jupiter rather than Ganymede, well, we'll just pass the SOI transition there. Uh, we can now target Ganymede and we can start plotting our encounters by adding a maneuver at our app apps and uh, burning pro or retrograde to set up a future encounter. And you can see doing this moves our target markers aside. Um, we could go for something like this, trying to hit it further on in its orbit. And you can see that we could have future encounters like that as well. But uh, 
The issue with being in this two to one ratio on our orbital um, periods is that we're still moving uh, relatively fast compared to our target at our periaps. Um, in, uh, in this particular example, uh, if we were in a two to one resonance and our periaps was at the orbital altitude of the target and we assume that the target is in a circular orbit, uh, which is more or less true. I mean, this is just to give you an idea of things. Our orbital velocities would differ by about 17%. We would be traveling 17% faster than the target. And that doesn't sound like a lot. I mean, 17%, that's 17%. That's barely more than 10%. And 10%, that's basically nothing, right? Well, uh, Ganymede is traveling at 10.8 kilometers per second right now. And does so fairly consistently throughout its orbit because it's fairly circular. Um, that means that the lowest relative velocity we can have to Ganymede is about 17% of that if we are in a two to one resonance. And that's still 1.7 plus kilometers per second. So that's, that's still very, very fast if we want to shed all that speed by, by thrusting with uh, an in inefficient hypergolic engine. Like we, w we want to have an ISB better than something like 315 on our craft that we send out to Jupiter. Uh, the way we can reduce this is by getting into an even closer resonant orbit. And um, the only thing you can plot really using just one maneuver node is one orbit ahead. But what we can do is set up a second maneuver node uh, and that will allow us to see encounters on future orbits because the encounters always show after, after the uh, final maneuver load. Let's slow down a bit so we don't pass the node here. So if we check these encounters, they are in 23 days. That means they are not on this orbit because, well, our first periapsis pass is seven days from now. Well, eight days from now. Uh, but it's rather behind our second periaps. And we can use this node to peek further ahead along multiple orbits. Once we get an encounter and lower our orbit further to closer match uh, Ganymede's orbit or any orbit of any celestial body you're trying to capture around, uh, one node isn't going to be sufficient to, to see the future encounters, uh, which would... Uh, which you would like to plot for. Because this is the lowest relative velocity we can actually get into uh, with the more primitive way of plotting our encounters. So um, third point I want to bring up apparently is, um, well, I, I obviously don't know everything. I know quite, quite little about things. Uh, one thing I once knew and apparently sort of forgot, but had in the back of my mind. Uh, once you're in uh, an orbit such as, as this, it's going to be very hard to bring down your relative velocity with an encounter with that celestial body just by encountering the same celestial body uh, without expending quite a lot of um, energy somewhere else in your orbit, I should add that as an addendum. Uh, and why is that? Well, when you encounter a body, uh, you aren't losing or gaining any speed relative to that body. Okay, let's see if we can actually explain that in a way that makes sense. Uh, say we uh, focus our view here on Ganymede and take a look at this encounter we have so haphazardly plotted. Let's say we plot that encounter instead. So we actually have an encounter that doesn't tear us to shreds. What I'm saying here is that at our entry point, we will have um, a velocity relative to Ganymede. It's going to be in this case, somewhere along the lines of uh, four to five kilometers per second, something like that. Uh, at our exit point, we are going to have the same relative velocity as we entered with. Like we're going to come in with a, a certain relative velocity here, 
we're going to exit with the same relative velocity. What has changed is our orbital path. You can see that the orbital path bends from that asymptote to that asymptote, like we're heading that way instead. Going the same speed relative to Ganymede, but now, in this case for instance, we would have our encounter here. And if we, instead of going radially in, like we were, we're going that way, we're encountering Ganymede over here. So we're heading that way, which is obviously the case if you look at our pre-encounter orbit here. Uh, our resultant orbit, instead of following this orange dotted line, which is our initial orbit, uh, is being bent uh, to more closely follow this red line. But remember, we're traveling at the same relative speed. The only difference is that now we're traveling more prograde and less radially. So we can't really shed the relative radial velocity um, relative to Ganymede and hope to get a cheaper encounter that way because our relative velocity in the prograde direction is, is, simply, is simply, well, our previous radial velocity. So this relative speed and this relative speed, like the relative speeds of both this previous orbit and the resultant orbit are the same in respect to Ganymede uh, at this point, I should say, because if we were to encounter Ganymede at some other point, it would be a slight difference. Um, so, the way you would shed your relative velocity further is by having encounters with other planetary bodies because then you can steer your pro or your your orbital direction further in respect to Ganymede which is our desired target. So if we if we had let's say this is going to be very finicky. If we had something like this for an orbit, let's see. This Around about there. Should really bring out the uh, precise node editing, but uh, this works as well, apparently. If we had something like this for an orbit, uh, where we would want to encounter Ganymede would be at our periapsis, because at our periapsis, we're going to be traveling tangentially to the orbit of Ganymede. Uh, if we encounter Ganymede here, uh, there's no way for us to shed our relative uh, radial velocity in an efficient manner. Uh, instead, because traveling like this and encountering it radially is the same as traveling in that bigger orbit we just had uh, entirely prograde. It's the same amount of relative energies. Uh, instead, if we had an encounter with, say, Callisto at our APWAPS, we could use that encounter to further raise our orbit like so. And if we had an encounter here with Ganymede, that encounter would have less relative velocity compared to our previous orbit. But we can't really achieve that by encountering Ganymede time and time again. And yeah, uh, it's, it's hell as it is to plot these things, but to plot it in 1.1.3, the patch which uh, Cosmos Crash is running his game in. Uh, <laughs> that's something else entirely, because then your your encounters wouldn't be these surefire things. They would flicker back and forth, and yeah. They, they, they did wonders with that in uh, the 1.2 patch, I believe it was. And uh, it's, been, it's been fairly stable ever since. But the difficulty still <laughs> remains of setting up everything correctly. So, uh, yeah, call that part one of uh, orbital maneuvers around Jupiter. If there's interest, I'll make another video. If not, uh, I hope you learned something. I've been the Gaspachian and, and uh, yeah, see you around.